All right, what is up guys? You can see the car is sitting outside. The turbo is already installed. Uh, I just wanted to go over all and every single tool that I used during this install for you guys real quick. Um, install wasn't too bad. Just my knees started to hurt more than anything since I had the front end of the car jacked up and I was leaning over the car. I had to take long breaks. I would just, you know, sit and watch YouTube, watch some Jimmy Oaks, give me some, some motivation to wrench and do things. But uh, here's all the tools I used. I don't think I used anything in the actual toolbox up here except for the four and like the extension, but I have everything else laying out. So I used the dikes, I used all three of these scribes. I didn't use any of those though. Um, but everything else I used. Let's see, we got an 8, 10, 12, 13, long 10, long 11, T20, T25, T27, T30, T40, a 5 mil, a 6 mil, M8, M10, and then a 5, 6, and 8 for ball headed Allens. All these extensions, uh, having a swivel head, Quarter inch, it's real nice with it. Unit wiggle, used that at one point. Uh, this was just like a shanky tool because my wherever it went, my flathead here was too long, so I needed to make a short one. So that's all that was for. Um, like I said, just using the six and the five out of these basically. Definitely want one of these. Need a magnet for when you drop 13,000 things down into the engine bay. Um, mechanical claws, they really help too uh, for those pesky bolts you drop. It uh. Use this to just clean things off along the way. Um, also, brake cleaner. You're going to want brake cleaner. You're going to want shop towels. You're going to want some tape. Tape up your O2 sensor hole until you put your O2 sensor in so you don't drop things in there. Um, just a couple of wrenches, 12, 14. I, did, I needed a 13, but my buddy had borrowed it and still hasn't given it back yet. So I took an old 5.8 and dremeled it a little bit just to fit uh, the oil fitting. And a 25 was for my catch can. You might not need that. And then I used this a little bit. Just put the adapters on. Use it when I can. But there really wasn't all that much you could use it for. Oh, this little guy was nice, nice for tight spaces. Um, where is it? These This little set. I forgot about these. You get like a, a really small four on there for some of the smaller fittings. Uh, for like the turbo drain or coolant or whatever. This was definitely nice with it. That's about all I got. That's that is what it is. The car sounds great. I haven't really driven it yet. I've been up all night. You can see me. I'm sweating. I'm drinking tons of beer. I'm about to shower and go to bed. But um, so far, so good. I mean, she sounds great. Tonight, when I wake up, I should have a file ready or instructions on what to do to lower the boost and then go do data logs. So uh, look out that look out for that video Monday. And by Monday, actually, I should already be on the dyno making numbers and it'll be like the next week so I'm kind of ahead on videos uh, if you do want to stay up to date and see things that are happening follow me on Instagram BR32YCE and I'm going to let it off from here with the, the rest of this video begin thanks for watching it's Friday morning it is 6.16 in the morning I got off work a little bit early um, I'm pretty freaking tired but I need to get this started so while the motor's still hot I'm going to take off the turbo blanket get the O2 sensor off and I'm probably going to have to take off the cool packs and the harness and the intake to get um, the tool in there properly to take the O2 sensor off. Um, we'll see, but I want to get that O2, O2 sensor off while it's hot. If it's not hot, it's going to give you a probably a lot of pain. Every time I've done an O2 removal on cold pipes, it's given me a lot of fight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while this is hot. Say so get the turbo blanket off, probably get the intake. Um, I got a lot of things to take. I'm gonna take off these hoses. You got this hard line for coolant. It's gonna sp spill up coolant everywhere. Um, of course, the whole intake, turbo muffler delete, the which we call it turbo 90 back there. Got all these little solenoids. There's a bunch of those back here behind the coil packs. There's a bunch of little things, and uh, we'll see how far I'll get before I feel like going to bed. I'd like to get the turbo out and stop sleep and then come install the turbo but uh we'll see we'll see well here we just got the turbo muffler delete out and it broke both of the seals um or the o-rings i guess you say that kind of sucks and this thing is filthy i don't know how much you guys can really see right now but 
this is gross. I'm glad to take this off and clean it. Uh, luckily, I had messaged them weeks and weeks ago about getting new O-rings for this, uh, specifically for when I was doing this turbo. So, thankfully, I have extra ones on hand. All right, well now you got, we got the Turbo 90 out. I'm about to take out the uh, coil packs here and I'm gonna remove this whole harness that goes across. We'll flip over here. Once you unplug everything over here, I'll uh, get these catch can lines out. Then we'll get the blow off valve out. I already ripped the shit out of the uh, turbo blanket. So RIP that. I'm gonna have to order a new turbo blanket and put the old heat shield on, which I have sitting over there in the box ready to go. I was hoping I wouldn't have to, but once again, always have backup. Make sure you got shit on deck or a second plan when you go to do things like this. But turbo looks pretty clean from here. Um, yeah, let's just get to it. All right, so now with the coil packs out of the way, you got a uh, connector here, connector here. Uh, this little guy will be clipped right there. Pull that up, it's kind of a pain in the butt. This all needs cleaned up real nice. Um, don't mind the dirt. I'm gonna be cleaning this all while I'm in here. But once you undo all that, and uh, of course you got all the ones for the solenoids, forgot about those. Uh, you get all those and then this whole harness will flip over and lay. Gives, frees up a bunch of room. Um, actually, you might have to do it with the bottom. Mm. Let me see. Okay, excuse that last clip. I thought it went that way for some reason, but you go all the way back around, you got another connector here, and the connector here, and then uh, this little clamp that's on the wiring harness, and you can just kind of flip this back real nice, and that frees up a ton of room. We're gonna get to this hard line, get that out of there. Uh, you can see the turbo blanket all ripped up now. Uh, we'll get this uh, blow off valve off and these solenoids and the hard line and then getting the turbo out should be pretty simple. I, I do have the car up on jacks and if need be what I'll do I'll take the dog bone bolt out and that allows the engine to move freely front to back and then you use this hook this is actually like a plastic cap take this hook here and I'll put a ratchet strap on that wrap it around the fridge give it a couple cranks and it should pull the motor forward ever so slightly and give me a little bit more room to pull the turbo out. Hopefully we don't need to do all that, but we're gonna find out. Oh, oh boy, it's almost seven o'clock, which is great because they wouldn't sell me beer at five o'clock this morning when I got off. So even though the car is like halfway apart, I'm gonna hurry up, get to this O2 sensor and uh, the gas station's are like right there. So I'm gonna walk over there, get me some beer, keep me motivated to keep going. Um, right now I'm about to do these solenoids and then this hard line real quick. Uh, and these are teeny teeny, I mean little itty bitty guys. And it's like a T25 and you got, you got all of these to do. And uh, what I'm doing to keep track of that is here in the house, I got the coil packs all laid out, you know, and then I'll lay them out accordingly the way they went in the motor. Um, it's pretty much all you gotta really keep track of for this. Everything else just kind of goes into place where it's supposed to. Um, everything, everything's pretty easy up until like getting the lines off of the turbo and getting the turbo out. And again, getting it in, getting the lines in, and then if you have to calibrate it, then that sucks. But um, yeah, other than that, I mean, those are the two hardest parts. Everything else just takes time. It's not even hard. It's not bad. This shit's it's pretty easy. I mean, I do work on airplanes for a living, but even this is still easy. All right, now we can attempt to get this O2 sensor out, even though the turbo blanket's still like halfway in my way. I'll give it a shot here. Oh, nice. Hell yeah, that's good. Now I will unplug it. It's the darker one. Here. Um, I am so glad that that came off easy. When we did Tyler's car, it was 
such a pain in the ass doing it off the car and cold. Um, I'm very happy. Now I can go get beer. I can fucking celebrate. O2 is out. It's really white. Now I'll get this blanket off. And the blow off valve, I guess. Well, got pretty far here. Um, when I get back from the store, we'll take off the blow off valve. We'll take off the V band clamp. V band. Oh, I can't talk. V band clamp. We'll take off this hard line. I already took out the screws for it. There's three of them. One, two, and three. Sorry, up here. Um, and there's a whole bunch of you got to disconnect it here, here. There's one right here, one right there. Uh, you can keep this one connected or however you want to do it. But uh, it needs, for me, it probably doesn't really have to, but that's a, like a lot of clearance here. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd recommend taking it off. And then uh, we'll get to taking the lines off and then the turbo, I guess. Probably take the turbo off and then call it quits and do that, uh, the install of the turbo this afternoon. All right, we're back from the store. Got me some beer. Uh, now we just did the hard line. I should have recorded it. I'm sorry. Like I said earlier in the video, there was three spots for it to screw in. Like one, two, and then the third one over there, you can kind of see it sitting up. But uh, there's a bunch of cool lines connected to it. So you got one here. You got one back here that's draining into this right now. You got this one. Of course, the one that goes uh, back into there. Now I just kind of hung it up here out of the way. Uh, now the only thing we have left really in the way is these solenoids and this... Uh, blow off valve so we're going to do the blow off valve next the solenoids you want to save to the very last because there is I mean it is an entrance to the motor you can see all the oil chilling in there so I'm keeping it covered up for now um, but yeah I'm going to pull this bottle out get that uh, blow off valve off and then we'll uh, I guess take these solenoids out no we'll start playing with, uh, with the lines oil lines and coolant lines actually get as much as we can and then do the solenoids and then do the turbo. Let's say you can do this V-band. It's coming along smooth though. So I went ahead, took the blow-off valve off. You can see it's just those three screws, five millimeter, super easy. And then you got your V-band clamp that went right here. Um, it'll be sitting like this. It'll be a six millimeter Allen key. Boom, loosen up. It's probably gonna be stuck like this. So take a flathead in between here, pry it. If it gets stuck again, stick it down either on this side or on this side and this little lip and just use your screwdriver, your flathead, and it'll pop right off. Take that off, and then these two might be stuck together. Do the same thing, a little crack that's in between the two. Get your flathead in there and twist, and then uh, it should pop down. Now we're going to go ahead and tack the uh, top oil line and this coolant line, and then we'll start, um, see that copper looking bolt? Uh, there should, there's four of those for the turbo itself. And we'll get those four off after those two and then get the other lines as like the turbo is being lifted out. Still need to do these solenoids. I will do those after these two lines. Um, yeah, we're almost there. Take this baby out. All right, guys. Well, I totally forgot that I don't run a heat shield because of my turbo blanket. I will be putting the heat shield back on. Okay, so for this oil line, the, the bolt for that is like this. The bottom portion of this keeps uh, that down, and then this portion is for part of the heat shield. The heat shield also, from what I remember, it's like three or four screws, and they go along the back side of the head. I think there's like two or three, and then you got that one. Um, I'd have to look at the actual piece, which I have just sitting over here. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few. So there's two. Two over here, two on the back. So this is the head side, and this is like up top, kind of near the coil packs. And then you got that one that's on that oil line. So that's what you're looking at. This will be going back on. I'm gonna clean it up. It's all dirty, but uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I totally, totally forgot. But uh, this oil line up top. If you didn't get an EQT kit with the new oil line, I have a, a braided oil line in there. You need to be really, really careful because it's a hard line. If you bend it in any way, it could restrict the oil flow going to the turbo. And that is very, 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 very bad. So try not to like 
put any pressure on that don't mess it up uh, me I'm replacing it so I don't really care but I was still careful uh, regardless it's good practice to always be careful don't get sloppy but uh and I'm gonna grab this oil line and we'll get the four bolts off the turbo itself which is probably gonna be a pain in the butt hopefully the studs are okay I don't this came with new studs but I don't feel like replacing studs we'll see we'll see all right guys we're making mad progress over here we got uh, the bottom bolt for the turbo out this top one on this side I'm working on the bottom one on this side and this will be the last one since it's like the most accessible um, and after that there's the bracket that there's a bracket that holds the turbo in this position so there's a bolt for that maybe two I don't really remember and then the oil and coolant lines on the other side the bottom and the, and the firewall side um so i had to take out this i was just going to leave this coolant line but it was in the way to get to this bottom bolt uh they're 12 millimeter uh there's only one i could use a ratchet on so far the rest i'm using a crescent wrench uh the other one down in there it's it's kind of a pain in the butt but they all go um pretty easy they're i mean they're coming off easily it's just a tight spot to work in but yeah we're getting there getting there getting there i'm getting real tired <laughs> All right, well, fast forward 12 hours later, I slept for a very long time. Uh, we just got the turbo out. The bottom oil line you see there, and then the coolant line is kind of tucked back there. That gave me so much pain, but Tyler's here. He helped, uh, he made this shit happen. We have got the turbo out now, and we'll show you the old one. Here we are, we got the EQT here. And if you notice this lip, how small that is compared to this you can imagine how much bigger the wheel is by itself you can see it's only got you can see the wheel here the way this looks with like a single blade on each one the EQT has two it's real nice and shiny it spins a lot better this one it's, it's still pretty decent it's not bad at all there's like no shaft play at all uh, this baby is ready to sell. Let me flip these real quick and we'll look at the uh, the exhaust exhaust side wheels. Um, so there's the IS38 and then the EQT. Quite a difference here. Quite the difference. Very excited. i got to go replace this oil line here you see. I was talking about earlier that came with the kit. Go replace that on the block and then the turbo can go in. Uh, after I also replace all the seals for everything but yeah damn all right guys right here you can see this is where your oil drain goes uh, it's just a six mil or uh, T what 27 something like that uh, right there and then that line will come up and it'll route all the way up here and see where we're coming from to get down to that you pretty much you really can't see it from up top this is my first time actually seeing it is with the camera but well, you can feel for it you gotta be careful you're not taking off that line I did that one first by accident but that one's an eight I believe so uh, this one's a six but we're coming along once this lines in we can throw the new turbo on do the lines and then from there it's just easy it's just getting this part done Ooh, excuse the messy table we are finally about to put this turbo in the car. We went ahead and replaced the, the kit comes with the seals. So all the seals on all the, uh, on the, all the lines. We got two here. Um, we replaced the feed line on the car um, with a new one. This nice, real nice flex line. And it goes down into the block where I was showing you guys earlier. Way down in there you can't, you can't really even stand up to see it. But it, it goes down there, it routes real good. I said, uh, all the seals replaced. We got bolts set out where they're supposed to be. We're going to do the oil line, the oil return line first on the bottom of the turbo. Uh, get that on and then go to the back of the turbo and do the two bolts for the coolant uh, return, I guess. And then from there, mount the turbo on to the, where, where they're supposed to go. Put a couple bolts in, do the other two lines. And then from there, it's, it's smooth sailing, tighten everything down, and just start reassembly. Reassembly is pretty simple, just time consuming, 
but it is easy I'd rather put more coolant in the car um, definitely check on oil we'll have to do uh, what you call it um, a couple cycles without the coil packs in there or the coil packs disconnected to prime the turbo and then we'll have to go through OBD 11 and do the wastegate adaptation Whew. a lot of things to do it's like 3 in the morning I'm getting it done now turbo's going in I'm gonna do a nice little time lapse or something Alright, so this is the position I have the turbo in right now, sitting behind the motor. This back coolant hose is a pain in the butt. This is the position I have to have it in to get this T27 into that. Um, and it's just to hold the bracket. I think it's just a bracket for the coolant line. It's pretty annoying, but I got the oil line hooked up on the bottom as well. I don't have a, bol a bolt on it yet, so I'm, a, I'm about to flip the turbo back up into, into position and try and sneak the bolt in through the bottom. And then I have one more bolt for that uh, back coolant line as well. Uh, they're both M10s. They're both M8s. So the bottom drain and that back coolant one, both M8s. Like I said, that, that one I was just doing, that's a T27. You see all my tools out here. I've used so many different things. Um, if you have a GTI, this is like a lot, a lot easier because you can go through the bottom. You don't have a drive shaft in a way and you can do uh, the oil line and that coolant line through the bottom. It's a lot easier to get a light down there, a couple extensions and it's a lot simpler. But on an R, if you're not trying to move the drive shaft, then you got to play around with these games, rearranging the turbo back and forth, up and down. Um, I've been at it for a while. My boy Tyler here was here, was here with me for a hot minute, uh, helped me out a lot. Uh, just doing small things, we're cleaning, we were, you know, getting seals swapped out, the turbo out, seeing how we're going to get these lines on once the turbo's in, and this and that, like, just getting a plan going. Um, and I took like an hour break, it's like 5.30 in the morning right now, so, but yeah, we're, we're almost there. I get this bolt in for the bottom, for the oil drain, um, from there it's, it's pretty much easy, mount the turbo, uh, stung the bolts down a little bit, get this bracket put back on um, I don't know if I really even had to take it off off but I did got it out of my way <sighs> a few other things but yeah once once I get this bolt in and get the turbo mounted from there it's just easy shit All right, after a lot of pain and suffering, getting that bottom oil bolt on is just ridiculous. Um, I don't really have, obviously, don't have any video to show you how to put it in. You're really just going to have to figure it out. I had to do a bunch of finger fiddling and have a, a towel down here just to make sure in case I dropped the bolt and I wouldn't lose it. Um, man, it's tough. It is not easy to do like I said if you have a GTI it's a lot easier you can get to this stuff from the bottom but on an R you can't I mean if, if I had a lift um, I'd be more inclined to take the drive shaft off and give me that extra you know with the car being on the ground and the garage and this and that I really do not feel like dealing with that um, it probably would have been easier but I don't feel like dealing with it so um, here we are I got three of the four bolts for the turbo itself to the block I need to tighten the top oil line I need to put another bolt in the back for the coolant line and then do the front coolant line and then I need to put this bracket on that holds the turbo on the bottom uh, just all these little things and once all that's done like on the turbo itself well I need to plug it in plug in the DV2 or the wastegate make sure you do that <laughs> um, yeah once that's done everything's easy I keep saying that I just need to get there I'm taking my time I'm tired I've been drinking beer <laughs> Texting my tuner, texting my boys, Instagramming and shit, but sun's up now. It's like 6 in the morning. Man. It looks so good in there, though. It really does. I don't even know if I want to put a turbo blanket on it. That heat shield's going to cover up most of it, but I mean, looking new. Damn. It's hot. Looks really good. Another little update here. Sorry I'm not going too, too in-depth like I want to. Um... It's super kind of hard when you're by yourself and a lot of this I'm doing over two three times sometimes just to get things exactly perfect but 
This last little bit, I've been messing with this oil line. Finally got it tied down, going down around the back. Here, you kind of see my thumb goes down, around. Down here, I put uh, the shielding back on it, and I have it routed down, and it kind of like goes over the the bracket that holds the turbo up. I'm sorry, I can't. You can't really see much. I can barely even see it myself, but it tucks down around in there. You want to make sure the oil line is not touching um, or not able to rub on any other things like the block there's a lot of like sharp edges here on the block around where it goes down uh, another reason to have the shielding uh, i just want to make sure like because the shit's going to move you know make sure it's not rubbing up against anything too important Whew, it's been a pain in my butt getting the exhaust line back up that wasn't too bad i can't get the clamp to go down the whole way um as it was touching before like these two things were touching so I don't know if I don't have this lined up properly or what. I've taken it off twice, tried it three times now. So I'm just going to leave it how it is and hopefully it doesn't leak. And if it does, then I mean, that's an easy fix, really. But uh, and here we are. I'm about to put this coolant line on, the O2 sensor in. Uh, after those two, and I connect the hose, I'm going to start putting the solenoids back in. I'm going to put the Turbo 90 on. I put the DV on, put the Turbo 90 on. Uh, and the turbo muffler delete, which I actually meant to do before the turbo went in, actually, but fuck. Well, I guess we'll do that, too. Well, we're shaping up. Things are looking good. Very happy. Progress is being made. I'm getting the solenoids back in now. Just got the boost pipes back on. Turbo muffler delete. Turbo 90. Um, intake. We'll be ready to get put on here in a moment, kind of. Uh, I want to get the solenoids in. Then I can flip this baby back over. Connect all the connectors, everything but the coil packs. I can get um, the coolant, the hard line, the coolant hard line on. Get all those back on. Um, catch can lines, intake, all the things. From here, it's all pretty simple. It's got these solenoids, they pop right in. Pretty much everything sitting in here. Nice and organized. Intake, and then I got the. Uh, Turbo heat shield to put on as well, and I'm freaking exhausted. My knees are killing me. I keep taking all these breaks because my knees are just so bad. Like I'm standing on tires because the, the car's jacked up in the air. My knees are just completely extended this whole time. Just it hurts. I've been leaning all in the engine bay and laying on things and cutting my hands up. I bled so many times. I got blood on the a bunch of shit in the in the bay. Whew. No tears though. No tears. Almost some tears. Now I'm going to get these solenoids on and I'm going to take a nice fat break and then uh, continue. What is up? Alright, we are almost ready to start the car. Sorry I kind of skipped over a bunch of things on, on reinstall reinstallation. Um, I had a friend over here and I didn't really want to record with him. We were chit chatting about life and stuff. But I did wind up putting the old heat shield on and now I have the routing for the O2 cable again. That's nice. Um, this looks really, really OEM. Like, if you look back here, I mean, the only thing that's going to throw you off is the is the wrap, um, I guess, and the fuel system and stuff. If you know what you're looking at, yeah, but if you don't, like, when I go to no prep races and stuff like that, people don't know what the fuck they're looking at. They see this, like, oh, yeah, it looks maybe ethanol sensor, you got some billet things, uh, looks like a stock turbo and some intake stuff maybe, but I like it. It gives it that that sleeper look. I might actually wind up putting the cover. I'm uh, sitting my broke ass axles. Well, uh, putting the engine cover back on, maybe. Eventually, we'll see. But as you can see, I don't have the coil packs connected. Uh, I still need to prime the turbo. I need to go in here with OBD11 and do the wastegate adaptation. Uh, make sure it passes. Then I can prime the car. Probably do that two, three times. Probably do it at least three times. And then I'll plug the coils back in. I'll let her sit for a while. I need to take it off jack stands. Actually, I might leave it on jack stands to check for leaks and stuff. But we'll see. I, I, I'm kind of worried. I know my downpipe is going to smoke a lot. I, poured, I lost a lot of coolant like onto the wrap. Hopefully, that doesn't really affect anything. We're going to find out. But I do expect a lot of smoke coming out of the bay, especially after touching all over the exhaust pipes and the turbo and leaving oil residue on it so it's going to burn off quite a bit Whew. I'm nervous I'm excited I'm tired as shit I've been up for way too long I've taken many many breaks because my knees hurt so bad from being like stretched out 
laying over the car doing things. But I went over everything like three, four times. I don't want to have to do this again. I've been very OCD with things. I changed the way the oil line routing was like six times. I did a bunch of things, cleaned a bunch of things, and double checking gaskets and, and torque and just all this stuff. And I kind of forget about the camera. Um, I do have another DIY out. When I went from IS-20 to IS-38, it's literally the same thing. Um, the only thing different is adding this um, oil feed line. And really, you just get behind the car. It's one bolt. Take it off. Put the new one on. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, but yeah, that other DIY is a little more in-depth. I have like a bunch of things on the screen for you to read. And I have all my tools laid out here. I'll show you guys all the tools I use. But yeah, that other DIY is a little more in-depth. But this is still... That was like two years ago, you know. I've learned a lot since then, which helped me doing this, obviously. I, I didn't have to waste a bunch of time doing some things. Then I kept dropping hardware. I probably spent collectively like an hour and a half just looking for dropped hardware in, in the bay. It's been a pain in my butt. <laughs> but anyway, we'll do this wastegate adaptation and uh, prime it a few times. Here we go. All right, so first things first, open up your OBD-11. You're going to go to engine, live data, and then look for this, charge pressure actuator acknowledgement. And this can tell you the live voltage of it right now. Uh, it, it will move, at least it did move ever so slightly. Um, but that's what it's set at. I, that's within spec. Now I'm gonna go out of here. See, you can see it moved a little bit. Go back, we're gonna go to basic settings. Try that. And then the wastegate, let's see what it's actually called. Go in here on the forms. First adaptation of charge pressure actuator. It's not under adaptation. First adaptation. Let's find that. Boom. I'm right, gonna hit the green button. Hopefully it works. I'm guessing that means it worked. But I don't know. I'm not really saying anything. It didn't tell me it was bad, so I mean that's a good thing, right? Hmm. All right. Well, I'm assuming I read read through some things and um, we do, I brought up some different live data points, and it's pretty much it. It's set right now to 3.6 volts. And then um, what you want to aim for is like 3.5 to 3.7. I think it's like 3.67 or whatever it said on there. Anyway, I just did the first priming of the turbo. There was no weird noises. There was no bad sounds. My heart dropped. This is nerve wracking. <laughs> I went over, like I said, I went over everything like three, four times, but I've been up for a long time. I'm exhausted and all the beer I've drank. <laughs> so let's, let's do it again here. I cannot wait to start this thing. God damn. I just texted the tuner, Frank Mabo, Mabo Tech, asking him how he wanted me to do the first logs. Um, I requested that we either, I go in on the, on the sliders on the computer and turn the boost down to like 24, 24, 24, 25 pounds and uh, log on that or he'll take the last file that he sent me and edit it, send it, and then I'll upload that to the car uh, at a lower boost so I'm not like because right now I hit like 28 29 pounds and I don't want to go ahead and shove all that into the car this turbo is supposed to flow so much more air it's like ridiculous and that's another thing I've been talking to people all night on Instagram is like how much power are we gonna make how much power are we gonna make it's not about the peak power right now for me I made 380 horsepower as more than enough that I need for everything that I do I mean who doesn't love more horsepower I'm not gonna complain with it my biggest up reason for upgrading turbos was for the reliability because uh, I already blew an IS-38 and I tracked the shit out of my car. I just want a reliable turbo and I want the fuel kit because I wanted my valves to be clean because I drive the shit out of my car. So, I want, you know, good airflow. I want a nice setup, nothing too crazy. But um, my just the IS-38 isn't good on the top end. Anywhere between like 4,500 and Redline, like it's dying hard. And I might make 380 wheel horsepower, but I'm only making that for like 
700 RPMs in the power band and it falls off hard. And then what this turbo should do, it should hold that power all the way to redline or at least pretty close to it. Like right now, if I were to hold 380 horsepower, say, to redline, it would be amazing. And now if this turbo, I should make, you know, 420, 430 wheel horsepower peak, but I should still hold, I mean, somewhere close 380 to 400 horsepower to redline, I'm hoping at least. And then, you know, we'll cap the torque around 420 as well and save the rods until we get a, uh, a belt motor in this thing, but that's that. I'm just hoping to make more top end power, not necessarily peak numbers. Um, like I said, with autocross, you don't really need, I mean, there's 130 horsepower Miatas out there kicking my ass, so uh, 50 more horsepower or whatever isn't gonna benefit me, really. I just, just want that reliability from this turbo. And of course, and then for the drag racing and all that, I mean, it's going to be a lot more competitive, a lot more fun. But the main reason is for reliability and to be able to continue beating the shit out of this car at autocross like it's meant to be. And eventually, I'll move up to big boy tracks and stuff, but that's that's in time. I need to make more money and pay this car off first. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to prop it one more time, poke the coil packs in, and we'll start the car. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start the car officially for the first time with the big turbo in. Um, like I said earlier, I kind of drenched my downpipe wrap in coolant and then with all the oily fingerprints and stuff on the exhaust, like the where the V-band goes and the turbo itself from installing it, it's going to smoke quite a bit. I'm only going to let the car run for probably a minute uh, while it's on jack stands to make sure nothing's terribly leaking. Um, after priming the car and going out there, the oil feed line was leaking like at the turbo. The only connector that I didn't install when it comes to any of the lines, that it was already installed when it came, it was leaking a little bit. So I took it off. I have like a, a bunch of O-rings in there. I put a slightly bigger O-ring around that and then reinstalled it, primed it three more times. It didn't leak. I checked the bottom of that line and... Uh, the coolant lines collect there too. I checked all that, made sure nothing was leaking, nothing under the car was leaking while it was being primed. But I don't think the water pump runs um, unless the car is on because it's electric. So I wouldn't really know for coolant if it's actually going to leak or not. Um, I put a decent amount in there already. Now 50 50 mix. I lost a whole bunch of coolant, like I said. But anyway, all right, fingers crossed. should not be inhaling it once this cold starts done it should be any second it is now wait for it boom rpms dropped we'll unplug the obd 11 drop it on the ground see what we say for vacuum i said 1617 on a cold start that's that's right Well, let's get this baby off jack stands, make sure my engine bay's not on fire, and uh, let her idle out in the driveway for a bit, and we can keep an eye on fluids and uh, all that stuff. I know, I know my subframe's covered in coolant, so it's gonna make a mess. I already got a mess here on the floor. I have to clean that up. I'll probably, well, this is, I'm gonna let it idle for probably like 20 minutes, uh, just to make sure and burn off all that shit. 
and I'm gonna sweep out the garage and clean up all this coolant, but whew, I'm so scared. I'm glad that that part of the day is over. Um, whew, I cannot wait to go for a test drive now. <laughs> Hopefully Frank gets back to me here in a minute. All right, guys, look at how beautiful she is. Just gorgeous. Fed it out here for about 30 minutes. Boom, boom. <laughs> Burning off all the coolant that was all over the downpipe and stuff. Uh, I haven't found any leaks or anything. It finally stopped smoking here a little bit ago. It looks really good. I can barely see my screen in the sun, but I am so happy. Um, I have a video. I might just stick in here right now. Don't Go. Listen to that. Do it again. Nice. I'm with my shirt off. It is extremely hot and I'm tired. And I'm sweating. I need a shower. But you can like really hear the spool. Like when you just tap the throttle. Really, with the IS38, it wasn't like that at all. I could maybe hear like a little like baby whistle, like starting off or whatever at idle or something. But now it's like significant. It's super nice with it. And I haven't even like, I've driven it <laughs> out of the garage. Out here, I went around the little circle here, and then backed it in. That's all I've done. Uh, waiting on Frank to get back to me, see how he wants to do this tuning stuff, but I'm about to go to bed. I'm about to pull the car inside, go over these tools for the beginning of this video, and then uh, take a shower, go to bed. I'm exhausted. But uh, thank you guys for watching. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I said sorry I wasn't as in-depth as I wanted to be, but my other, my IS38 install video on the GTI, uh, it goes a little more in-depth, even though uh, if you're on an R, you can't go up through there and just take a drive shaft off. Whatever. Check out that video, too, um, if you want more install, turbo installs, I guess. Um, that's all I got. Really appreciate you guys for watching. Shout out to everybody who's helped me along the way, all my friends. Shout out to EQT. It's amazing turbo. The fitment's perfect, like, and the hype behind it is unreal. Like, I've been waiting for a very long time, and... I just can't wait to get to racing and stuff with this thing. I cannot freaking wait. We got this roll race event on the 29th. Um, I'm gonna be in there to be the first event on this new setup just to see how she does. I think the last time, I have it written down, but I think it was 11.30 something is what I ran from a 30 mile an hour roll. That was two years ago. So I'm gonna beat that like 11.30 from a 30 roll, which I, it should be freaking easy. Even just the tune swap and the MPI easily beat that back then i was running like apr intake and intercooler and it's, it's long 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 time ago um no motor mounts no no lift shift so it should be easy to beat very easy um anyway that's all i got i'm exhausted i'm rambling i appreciate you guys for watching this i know this video is long as shit but i appreciate it and i'll catch you guys on the flip flop